Hi, welcome to Auditing and Assurance Principles. This is your teacher, Miss Maria Angelica C. Balatukan. So we're now on our first module, which is entitled Audit and Assurance Basics. And lesson one of this module will focus on assurance and non-assurance services. Topics included for this lesson are concept of assurance, elements of assurance engagements, classification of assurance engagements, and non-assurance engagements. By the end of the lesson, the student should be able to differentiate assurance from non-assurance services and identify and describe the objectives, nature, elements, and types of assurance engagements. So let's begin. The concept of assurance. So what is assurance? To assure means to give confidence or conviction. In auditing sense, assurance refers to the auditor's satisfaction as to the reliability of an assertion being made by one party for use by another party. So the role here of the auditor is to give assurance, to give confidence that the assertion declared by one party is something reliable. So therefore, the assurance services are intended to enhance the credibility of information about the subject matter, for example, the financial statements, by evaluating whether the subject matter conforms in all material respects with the suitable criteria. So the assurance services is a three-party contract which the assurers which include the CPAs, reports on the quality of information. So what are assurance services? Examples are audits of financial statements of listed and unlisted entities, assurance on the balloting of contents, for example, in an academy award, and reporting on compliance of laws, rules, and regulations. To be called as an assurance engagement, five elements should be present. And what are these? First is the three-party relationship. So it's not two-party, it's not one-party, but three-party. So who, compri who comprises the three-party relationship? So it includes the practitioner, the responsible party and the intended user. So we'll talk about who are these in the next slides. Subject matter. This was mentioned earlier in the definition of assurance. So the subject matter should be appropriate, which is identifiable and capable of consistent evaluation and information about it can be subjected to, up to procedures for gathering sufficient appropriate evidence. So it should be appropriate. Criteria. The criteria should be suitable. And how do we know if it is suitable? It is relevant, complete, reliable, neutral, and understandable. Fourth, we have evidence. Sufficient and appropriate evidence is needed and it should be performed with professional skepticism. Okay. The evidence gathering should be with professional skepticism. Then number five, we have the assurance report. So the assurance report should be a written report that could either be reasonable and positive or limited and negative. Okay, Remember, these are the essential elements. All these should be present to be Identify for an engagement to be identified as assurance engagement. First, we have the three party relationship. So, the three party relationship includes what again? So, we have the practitioner, we have the responsible party, and the intended users. So, first is the practitioner. The practitioner is the auditor. So, practitioner is the broader term for auditor as used in the professional standards, which relates only to practitioners performing audit or review engagement with respect to historical financial information. Next, we have 
the responsible party okay it doesn't mean that this one is responsible party and the other members of the three-party relationship are not the responsible parties okay this is just a term that used to describe the person or persons who is responsible for the subject matter okay does not specifically describes the party as a responsible and the others are irresponsible party so what this means is that this is the individuals the party who is in charge of the subject matter or the subject matter information and what is this subject matter information is the assertion as mentioned also earlier the responsible party may not be the party who engages the practitioner or the party who engages the practitioner is the engaging party pwede daw nga dili ni siya mao ang nang hire sa practitioner okay then intended users so as the term uh, means diba para asa para kang kinsa day para kang kinsa so this is the person the persons or the class of persons for whom the practitioner prepares the assurance the responsible party can be one of the intended users but not the only one so if you can recall the responsible party is the one who is responsible for the subject matter meaning siya ang nag-prepare or nasa ilahang department ang preparation or ang pag-produce information so ang rule pwede daw na ang responsible party is one of those who will uh, for whom the practitioner prepares assurance pero dili pwede na siya lang ang siya lang isa ang intended users one as uh, one of the intended users could be the responsible party pero dili pwede nga the responsible party is the only intended user Okay, that's in short. Whenever practical, the assurance report is addressed to all intended users, but in some cases, there may be other intended users. Okay, so again, we have three members of the three-party relationship, the practitioner, and then you have the responsible party. So that is the one who prepares the information, and then the intended users who will receive the report of the practitioner and remember the responsible party can be one of the intended users but not the only one intended user dapat na ay separate nga intended user because if it is the same person like the responsible party is also the intended user meaning wala tayo ka third nga party di ba o saraman sila so this is a two party relationship dili siya three party nga relationship Okay, so sa audit lang ta mag-require yun nga na ay three individuals in a relationship, di ba? Sa real life, di taga nahanog three party, di ba? That is a love triangle. But in auditing, kinahanglan nga tulo. Okay, dapat na ay love triangle. Na ay, aha, dapat tulo yun ka buok ang members sa three party relationship. So that's the first requirement. So the responsible party and the intended users may be from different entities or the same entity. For example, an entity senior management may engage a practitioner to perform an assurance engagement on a particular aspect of the entity's activity that is the immediate responsibility of the lower level of management which is the responsible party but for which senior management is ultimately responsible okay so na by three party relationship ani yes first we have the practitioner kinsay nag hire sa practitioner si intended user which is the senior management pero si senior management ba ang nagama sa information nga gi audit ni practitioner dili na ay lain nga party which is the lower level of management so si lower level of management siya ang responsible party okay so naa tayo tulo ka party relationship 
In some cases, the intended users, for example, bankers and regulators, impose a requirement on or request the responsible party or the engage, engaging party of different to arrange for an assurance engagement to be performed for a specific purpose. When engagements are designed for specific intended users or a specific purpose, the practitioner considers including a restriction in the assurance report that limits its use to those users or that purpose. Okay, so if this is for a specific purpose nga type of assurance engagement, kinahanglan din na siyang specify sa assurance report. Para dili siya, para katong, katong mga users nga mubasa sa report, makasabot sila nga nung kanira ang na-appeal sa report, nga nung limited man ang content sa report, kay kinahanglan man good nga aware ang users. Kaya pwede man ma-misinterpret ma ang information kung wala siya labot pero hingapin po siya o basa sa report nga gihatag ni auditor. So, kinahanglan din siyang specify ang limitations at to nga specific nga report or special nga report. The second element of assurance engagements is the subject matter. So, the subject matter should be appropriate. And how do you know if it is appropriate? It is identifiable and capable of consistent evaluation or measurement against the identified criteria and such that the information about it can be subjected to procedures for gathering sufficient appropriate evidence to support a reasonable assurance or limited assurance conclusion as appropriate. So, maaniyang requirements para sa subject matter. And we have the term subject matter information. This is the outcome of the evaluation or measurement of a subject matter. Okay, this is the information that results from applying the criteria to the subject matter. It is the subject matter information about which the practitioner gathers sufficient appropriate evidence to provide a reasonable basis for expressing a conclusion on in an assurance report. Okay, so let's identify what is a subject matter and what is a subject matter information. So here is the table for an example okay so you have there the form could be the financial performance or conditions and the subject matter is the historical or prospective financial position financial performance and cash flows so in short these are your financial statements katong historical perspective Mani siya tong forward-looking projections, mga projections ni siya, projected financial statements. And what information do we get from those or from the subject matter? You will get the information about the recognition, measurement, presentation, and disclosure represented in the financial statements. So this is your assertions. Uh, another example for the form, it could be the non-financial performance or conditions. And what is your subject matter? That is the performance of an entity. And what information can you get from this one? You can use the key indicators of efficiency and effectiveness. That is the assertion. Okay. Then physical characteristics could be another form. And the subject matter is the capacity of the facility. And what information can you obtain from the subject matter, the specifications document? So this is what the auditor will uh, audit. Systems and processes as another form. The subject matter could be the entity's internal control or IT system. And the assertion that will be audited would be the assertion about effectiveness. And the form is behavior. The subject matter could be the corporate governance, compliance with regulation, human resource practices. And the subject matter is a statement of compliance or a statement of effectiveness. So, kaning subject matter information, mao ni siya ang focus ni auditor. Nga asa man niya kwa oni nga information, gika na siya aning subject matter.